Hello and welcome to another edition of the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week with me, Mr. Barton. Now, I am a huge fan of when I find a resource that tackles a classic, common, bog-standard topic, but in a different, engaging way. And this is exactly what I've got lined up for you this week. Expanding brackets, flipping heck. When do kids first meet expanding brackets? Well, it's probably year seven, if not a little bit before. Some year sevens I know have already met it in year six. And yet, do year 11s nail expanding brackets? Not always. Do year 10s nail it? No, no, no. Even though they've had five years of practice. So if there is a resource that can tackle it in a slightly different way, perhaps getting students to think a little bit deeper of it, as opposed to just going through loads of routine questions, I'm going to be a huge fan of it. So let's take a look at it. Here it is, expanding brackets, which has been kindly uploaded by... R Mathematics. I can never say those names right, but hopefully that's right. AR Mathematics. So it consists of a PDF and I've downloaded the PDF here. And there it is. Expanding brackets, fill the blanks. Now the resource really speaks for itself. It is a series of expanding brackets questions with the blanks filled in. But crucially, the blanks aren't in the answers. The blanks are in the questions. So what's this doing for the student? Well, firstly, it's given them two for the price of one. It's practice of expansion and it's practice of factorizing. So we can see here that this first question here is essentially a factorizing question. But as we go down, things get a little bit more complicated. So we'll see here, by the time we get to question 11, that students have not only got to factorize, but they've got to work backwards and a bit of logical thinking to think what, what numbers could go in those squares to enable us to make sure we get those five X's that we need and make sure we get that plus 10 at the end we need. Now, when you give this to students, they're likely to think, flipping out, what is going on here? This looks an absolute nightmare, especially, especially when you get into question 18, when there's, there's loads of blanks flying around. But here's the beauty of it. You can say to students, as I said to mine, look, put down some numbers that you think it's right, then just cover up this answer, pretend you can't see the answer, and just work out the question, treat it as a normal expansion brackets question. And if when you expand the brackets, you end up with, in this case, 5x plus 10, then you've got it right. If you don't, you've got it wrong. So you get in the practice of factorizing, and you get in the practice of expanding to check your answer, and you're reinforcing the beauty of algebra, it, uh, it, which is more often than not, whether it's solving an equation or substitution, or in this case brackets, you can always uh, check your answer. So it's just a lovely activity to give kids that purposeful practice of expansion and factorizing, but in a different way. And my kids liked the fact that they could see the answer and they essentially had to work back and find the question. And this got me thinking, I wonder whether this resource could be used for, or this style um, could be used for other things. And I think it could. You could take any question and, and add in fractions sprang to mind immediately for some reason. Where you set out a question, set out an answer, and you just leave gaps in the question. In adding fractions, it may be the, the common denominator or one of the numerators and so on. So if this goes down well with your students, and it certainly went down well with mine, then start to think about different ways you could adapt this resource. Um, and oh, I'm always a massive fan of that. Look at that. The authors kindly provided the answers as well. So a wonderful, simple, straightforward resource that you can use in the classroom. Um, a word of caution, and again, I'm, apologies if this, this sounds patronizing, but it's a mistake I've made in the past. I wouldn't use this to teach expanding brackets or factorizing. I would only give this to kids once they're comfortable with the basics. Otherwise, they're going to get all muddled up, working memories overloaded and all that kind of stuff. So once your kids are pretty confident going one way with expanding, then maybe give them this resource and just see what they make of it there. It's a challenging one, but it's a good one as well. Anyway, hope that was useful. If you've enjoyed this resource, hop back onto the page here, leave a little review um, for, for the author to say thanks. And I shall return with a fresh resource of the week next week. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.